Sitting at the very western edge of Europe is a land with some of the most unspoilt and dramatic landscapes in the whole of Europe. In fact, it's so isolated that it's one of the few parts of Western Europe that the Romans never actually reached. Vast expanses of blanket bog cover the low mountains right throughout the land. And its western half seems to be eternally covered in mist and rain. Christianity arrived in this place very early on. Legend says that a bishop from Britain named Patrick introduced the new religion sometime around 430 AD. The original Celts called the place Erin. Today, we know it as Ireland. Ireland remained Christian right through the Dark Ages, evolving its own brand of Christianity known as Celtic Christianity. The monastery was the centre of Celtic Christianity and during this time literally hundreds of monasteries were founded all over Ireland. South of the capital Dublin, in the middle of the Wicklow Mountains, there is a small valley that combines the unspoilt, magnificent Irish scenery with the remains of one of the country's greatest monasteries. In this video, I'm going to show you why Glendalough is such a special place and why it's so high on my list of favourite places. In 515 AD, a young monk named Kevin, Kevin in English, who was just a teenager at the time, arrived in the Valley of the Two Lakes, or Glendalock. He came here to find solitude with nature and to devote himself to meditation and prayer. Legend says he spent six years living as a hermit inside this cave beside Glendalock's upper lake. Other monks heard of Kevin's holy lifestyle and followed him into the valley. Eventually, a community was born and a small monastery was established next to the lake. Within a few years, the community outgrew the site next to the lake and the monastery was moved further up the valley where there was land for it to grow and develop. And so, the monastic city of Glendalough was born. When Kevin died in 580, he became known as Saint Kevin and quickly grew to be one of Ireland's most popular saints. St Kevin's fame, and indeed Glendalough's fame as well, spread right through Ireland and the monastery became one of the island's largest. This model in the Glendalough Visitor Centre shows how the monastery probably looked at its peak in the 11th century. Today, there's quite a number of remains of ancient churches and other buildings to be seen here. Considering what happened to Glendalough in the 1,500 years since St Kevin founded it, it's amazing that anything is left at all. The monastery was sacked and burnt to the ground four times by the Vikings, and it was destroyed by accidental fire nine times between 775 and 1071. The monks just kept repairing it and carried on with life. Today's main entrance into the site is the same one used by the monks in the early Middle Ages. The gatehouse is the only one remaining in Ireland and was built around the year 1000. The most obvious building at Glendalough is the beautifully preserved Round Tower. Round Towers are an Irish icon and most Dark Age monasteries had one. There are quite a few Round Towers remaining all over Ireland and the Glendalough Tower is one of the best preserved. They were used as both a bell tower and a watchtower against Viking raids. 
The door is located about three metres from ground level to make the tower inaccessible during attacks. The centre of life in the monastic city was the cathedral, built sometime around the mid-900s. It still has some interesting features, including the remains of the beautifully sculpted archway and even the little cupboard used to keep the communion chalice is still there. Behind the cathedral is a small building called the priest's house. Now this was in fact a tiny oratory or chapel, but some archaeologists believe it may have been a small scriptorium where manuscripts like the Book of Kells were copied. There actually was a famous gospel book called the Book of Glendalock, but unfortunately this was lost a very long time ago. By far the best preserved building at Glendalock is St Kevin's Church, which once again is unbelievably old. It was probably built around the year 800, and like the Round Tower, it's in a remarkable state of preservation. In fact, it's one of the best preserved early Irish churches. Except for a small amount of restoration in the mid 19th century, what you're looking at here is an original 1,200 year old church. You can see the kind of wealth the early Irish monasteries had by visiting the museums in Dublin. The Clonmacnoise Crozier, St. Patrick's Bell, the Arda Chalice, and most of all the Book of Kells shows us what incredible artisans the early Irish monks were. Tragically, Glendalock's treasures are long gone. But the great artworks that do survive from that time show us the immense wealth that attracted the Vikings to the Irish monasteries. Surrounding the monastic site is the spectacular scenery that makes Glendalock something unique. The rugged mountains form a dramatic backdrop to the ancient remains. The valley is often covered in mist and rain, adding to the austerity of the place. The upper lake at the end of the valley is even more dramatic, and you can easily see what brought St Kevin here in the first place. It probably hasn't changed much in the last 1,500 years. For me, Glendalock is a special place for two reasons. Firstly, you can see how the early Irish monks lived and under what conditions they created the great artworks of the Irish Dark Ages. The remains of St Kevin's monastic city gives you a real sense of history. There's no development around it, it's still in its original setting and it's probably just how the early monks knew it. Secondly, it's the setting. Sitting in its isolated valley with its two lakes, surrounded by the Wicklow Mountains, I don't think I've ever been to a place that gives me such a feeling of being at peace. Today, the monastery at Glendalock is the most visited ancient site in Ireland. Nearly everyone who comes here stays for about 15 minutes, then goes on to the next site to be ticked off their Irish itinerary. But for anyone who decides to stay in this valley for a day or two, they are certainly well rewarded. Stay a few days in Glendalock and you have the rare opportunity to escape the 21st century and you'll find one of the most peaceful places in the whole of Europe.